The RBS-70 is one of the most effective man-portable air defense systems, shortly MANPADS. On the other hand, this missile, which takes its name from the abbreviation of Robot System 70, has a modest combat career compared to its many rivals in the market. Today, we're investigating the RBS-70, the Swedish style of MANPADS. The RBS-70 has a limited combat career despite its 40-year service. A few years ago, its many users had begun considering discarding its early versions. However, by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the RBS-70 has become a favorite manpads again. Its design concept and features that defy time makes this air defense system indispensable. Besides, the RBS-70 has always kept up with the new technologies. In 1967, a special committee was formed in the Swedish Armed Forces to review the air defense requirements of the country. Stuck between NATO and the Warsaw Pact in the coercive atmosphere of that time, the neutral Sweden had to secure a vast terrain with a small population. Its unique conditions required unique concepts and weapon systems. So, the comedy chose an air defense structure combining the J-37 Vigan interceptors and short-range missile systems which was the best solution based on the given economic and strategic grounds. The plan's new air defense system step had to be a low cost, easy to use and resistant or even immune to modern electronic warfare equipment. It would replace the 20mm M40 automatic anti-aircraft guns and the Red Eye man pads locally designated as the RB69 at the brigade level and the Bufoj 40mm and 57mm anti-aircraft guns at the divisional level. Sweden awarded Bufosh Defense, today's Saab Bufosh Dynamics, the development contract for the new system called the RBS-70 in 1969. The Swedish Armed Forces had initially considered it only as a manpads development project. Yet the studies showed that the system would be much more effective if a search radar and IFF system were included. So Sweden also began to work on the PI-69 IFF system and the PS-70R basic draft search radar in 1972. One year later, the first RBS-70 was delivered for trial purposes. Sweden gave the first production orders for the RBS-70 missiles, sights, stand and PI-69 IFF sets in 1975. The Swedish Army training units received the first systems with only day operation capability in 1976. The first operational units were formed the following year. The first basic draft radar sets were ordered in 1978 and delivered within a year. So, the RBS-70 became fully operational in 1979. As you see, the RBS-70 was a part of an integrated air defense system. It was designed to fill the gap between manpads and short-range air defense missiles and could also be used for both tasks. The manned transportable air defense system would be a more proper definition for the RBS-70 rather than manpads. The basic RBS-70 fire unit has a stand and a sight as the two major parts, each a one-person pack. A third team member carries missiles in container launcher tubes. Alongside the target data receiver terminal, which is used in conjunction with the drove radars, the IFF equipment is optional and they require a fourth and a fifth soldier for transportation. Before firing, three legs of the tubular stand assembly are unfolded and roughly leveled by adjustments to one of them. After the operator's seat is unfolded from the vertical central tube, the gyro stabilizer site, battery power supply, IFF unit and container launcher missile tube are attached. This work takes only 30 seconds by a well-trained crew member. Each RBS-70 firing units in a company are deployed around 4000 meters apart allowing it to defend an area of approximately 250 square kilometers. Target is acquired by the Jura 40 radar with the moving target indication mode, which discriminates the target against the clutter. The radar antenna is elevated on a hydraulically operated mass to 12 meters high. Three operators in the operating cab detect and manually track targets on the digital displays. A fourth crew member plots the air situation as updated by higher echelons on a map. From a 12-kilometer range, 
The Juro 40 can detect the target with a radar cross section of 0.1 square meters and a speed of 1800 meters per second. For a target with a 3 square meter radar cross section, this distance increases to 28 kilometers. The radar's maximum detection range is 40 kilometers. The RVS-70 can also be used with other radar systems such as the Jirov-75, P-Star and HARD. The target data from the Jirov-40 can be transmitted to up to 9 fire units by radio or cable link. After receiving the data, the computer of the target data receiver unit applies a parallax correction, displays the required angle of traverse and range to the target on a small screen and transmits an acoustic signal to the gunner. Then. He or she rotates and elevates the sight and launcher assembly via two aiming handles until hearing a pulse tone on the headset. The gunner has a fine aiming sight with a 7x magnification and a 9 degree aperture. The RBS-70 can also be fitted with the CON clip-on night aiming device for all weather operations. Its detection ranges against aircraft and helicopters are over 10,000 and 6,000 meters respectively. Due to tactical requirements, the RBS-70 firing unit can also be operated individually, independent of the radar. If the automatically activated IFF equipment receives a friendly response, the firing circuit is overridden while visual signal lamps inform the gunner. The later target data receiver versions can also list the targets according to the priority in the threat perception. When the target is in the range, the gunner launches the missile by pressing a button with their left thumb. Then, the laser guidance unit is activated and the booster motor is ignited. This motor stops before the end of the missile leaves the tube for operator safety and then is jettisoned at several meters from the muzzle. Four center body fins and four rear cruciform control surfaces unfold before the sustainer motor ignites. The guidance receiver on the missile begins to track the modulated laser guidance beam. To hit the target, the gunner only has to keep it in the middle of the crosshair of the gyro stabilizer sight by using a thumb joystick. There is no radio connection between the missile and the firing unit. Besides, the RBS-70 has no infrared or radar seeker. So, it is immune to jamming, decoys and chaff flares. After the first engagement is completed, the empty tube is discarded. Reloading takes less than 5 seconds. The RBS-70 is an easy-to-use system. Simulator training of the operator takes about 15 to 20 hours. The initial RB-70 Mark Zero missile weighs 15 kilograms. It is sealed in a container tube in the factory. The Mark Zero variant has both impact and active laser proximity fuses fitted to the high-explosive shape charge pre-fragmented warhead. The warhead contains 2,000 to 3,000 tungsten pellets each with an optimized diameter of 3 mm. The gunner can set the impact fuse via the aiming grip on the left before the launch. This mode is used against targets such as helicopters, flying nap of the earth profiles or behind natural obstacles. The warhead can also penetrate light armored vehicles and surface targets. The RB-70 Mark Zero's effective engagement altitude is from 0 to 4000 meters. It has an effective range of 5000 meters and a top speed of Mach 1.5. The later Mark 1 variant weighs 16.5 kilograms. It is a laser guidance sensor unit increasing the rearward field of view from 40 to 57 degrees to enlarge the available engagement envelope. The RB-70 Mark 1 has an effective range of 6000 meters and a top speed of Mach 1.6. The complete weight of an RBS-70 firing unit is 87 kg. The modulated laser beam riding guided RB-70 Mark II missile weighs 16.5 kg. This variant has a length of 1.32 meters, a diameter of 106 mm and a wingspan of 0.32 meters. It has solid fuel booster and sustainer rocket motors. The Mark II version's top speed is 580 meters per second in other words, Mach 1.75. The missile's effective range is 7000 and 4000 meters for head-on and crossing engagements, respectively. Its maximum effective altitude is 4000 meters. The RBS-70's vehicle launch version is RBS-70 VLM. It has been mounted on many tactical vehicles and trucks, 
such as the Land Rover Defender, Iveco Fiat 4010WM, Agrali Mahua, Tuna UR53 AR50, Humvee and Unimog. Also, Sweden used the mobile Luftwerns robot bandwagon 71 air defense system with the RBS-70. Also known as the LV RBV-71, the vehicle's hull was the converted obsolete IKV-10-2 and IKV-10-3 self-propelled infantry cannons. The missile system was carried inside the hull and raised when required for action. Besides, the RBS-70 has been mounted on the V-200, Cheta, M113 and Talha armored vehicles. On the other hand, the Finnish Ilmatorian Taohios 05, aka ITO 05, uses the RBS 70 on the integrated Azrat R turret with the hard 3D air surveillance radar and related electro optics. The German Ocelot air defense system with the Azrat turret can also fire the RBS 70 on demand. The non serial M113 Armad. Crossbow and Blazer mobile air defense systems were equipped with the missile. The RBS-70 has also been mounted on some naval vessels as an improvised solution. Its air-to-air -air version has never reached the serial production phase. In 1984, Sweden began to work on the RBS-70M variant with a better night capability. Even though this version never reached the serial production phase, it became a base for the RBS-90. The remotely controlled RBS-90 has two launchers and is used with the incorporated G-Band Jurov-75 radar. It fires the RB-70 Mark II missiles. The Bolida missile is based on the RB-70 Mark II but further developed with the latest generation of computers and state-of-art electronics, providing many new features and increasing the effectiveness of the missile. Saab Bufoj Dynamics unveiled the new RBS-70 new generation version in 2011. Also known as the RBS-70NG, it has an improved sighting system, automatic target tracking capable of night vision, and improved training and after-action review features. The RBS-70NG's pedestal-mounted variants have been exhibited mounted on the Mars, LMV, JLTV, and Patria AMV wheeled armored vehicles. Despite its design and concept advantages in Manpad's class weapons, the RBS-70 has not made a significant name in combat due to its operator countries, which generally have a peaceful history. During the Iran-Iraq war, Iran used the RBS-70 against the Iraqi aircraft. Even though some Iranian sources claim it played a crucial role in the Karbala 5 operation, there are no reliable combat records of how many successful kills that were achieved. The first known record is the shooting down of a rebel OV-10 Bronco during the 1992 Venezuelan coup d'etat. Even though some Swedish sources claim that the RBS-70 was used in the Kargil war, we could not reach any Pakistani or Indian reports about this subject. The RBS-70's most recent operational records are more intense. The Ukrainians claim that the Manpads has shot down one Ka-52 helicopter and one Su-24 aircraft alongside some cruise missiles drones and loitering munitions. Ukraine seems happy with the RBS-70's performance and demands more systems. Even though Sweden had decided to phase out its RBS-70's and RBS-90's in favor of the Iris-T SLS, it reactivated them in 2019. Despite its obvious range and mobility advantages, the Iris-T SLS does not have the flexibility of the RBS-70 and RBS-90. The RBS-70 and G variant keeps finding new customers in America and Europe. The RBS-70 still has potential against modern threats thanks to its flexibility and high effectiveness. They are not obsolete yet. This unjammable air defense system offers more than an ordinary man pads. We may say that the legend of the 40-year-old RBS-70 just began. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.